Welcome back to Discover ARRT. In this episode, we are pleased to introduce Zachary Siegel, Psychometrics Manager at ARRT. He is going to delve into the intricacies of standard setting and exam scoring, topics that are crucial for maintaining the integrity and fairness of our examinations. Thank you for that introduction. Today, I'm going to walk you all through four key components of the exam scoring process. We'll start by setting expectations for exam performance before I demonstrate the calculations that go into scoring and then finish off with a series of reports available through the ARRT website. Everything starts with standard setting. We use this process to create a mathematical representation of the qualified candidate that we can then use later for our scoring calculations. So who should pass the exam? That's the key question. To answer this, we will have to define the minimally qualified candidate, someone who has the ability to practice at entry level, but nothing beyond that. ARRT recruits subject matter experts working in the field. This means that radiographers are going to define the minimum qualifications for radiography, and nuclear medicine is handled by nuclear medicine technologists, and so forth. These subject matter experts spend significant time discussing what makes a candidate minimally qualified at entry level. For example, the committee may feel that providing quality patient care and conducting basic image analysis are within the realm of the minimally qualified candidate. However, they may feel that the candidate doesn't need to have a full understanding of the regulatory framework around the discipline. Please understand that these definitions are unique to each discipline. What one discipline considers basic may be more advanced than another, and some disciplines may require more comprehensive knowledge of regulations as opposed to others. While what you see on screen is a generic example, these are the types of discussions that our committees have when defining that minimally qualified candidate. We ask our subject matter experts to identify knowledge and skills that represent candidates who are not yet qualified or those who are beyond the minimal level or what we call clearly qualified. These additional categories help refine the definition of the minimally qualified candidate and help the committee come to a consensus. For example, Candidates who are not yet qualified may be able to answer simple anatomy questions, and even qualified candidates may not be able to identify specific pathologies on an image. Never fear, while the items related to the top or bottom row of this chart may not define the minimally qualified candidate, they do improve the reliability of the exam and refine the mathematical model that we use to set the cut score. More on that in the next section. Once the committee has defined the minimally qualified candidate, we need to turn that description into something that we can use for scoring. There are many methods out there, but we can group them into two broad categories, item-specific and global. Our most common item-specific activity is a simple question for our experts. What percent of minimally qualified candidates will answer this item correctly? When we ask the question enough times, say the length of an exam, we can calculate a numerical representation of the committee's expectations. Global methods take a different approach. Here, we might ask, what is your ideal percent correct threshold for the exam? How high or low are you willing to deviate from that? Although there are fewer data points than the item-specific methods, these global methods provide valuable guardrails for the process overall. For example, would the public be okay with an exam standard that means only 60% would pass on their first attempt? How about 40? If you want to read more about standard setting, please follow the instructions on screen to navigate to our published reports. Or if you prefer, you can pause the video here and use the QR code on screen to navigate to the same location. Now that we have a passing standard, we can calculate the exam's cut score. Before we show off the mathematics, we need to cover a little vocabulary. Specifically, the difference between a standard and a cut score. There is only one standard for each exam because it represents the ability of a minimally qualified candidate. However, each unique set of items administered to candidates, we call that a form, has a different cut score. It will change to account for the difficulty of the items selected for that administration. Speaking of item difficulty, it is a common misconception that exam items are weighted such that correct answers are worth more when the item is more difficult. This isn't true. Each correct answer is worth one point. But to keep the exam fair, we calculate a unique cut score for each form based on that overall standard. A form with harder items 
it's going to take fewer correct answers to reach the same standard. ARRT uses a statistical method called item response theory to calculate item difficulty and cut score. While the specifics are beyond the scope of this video, we can envision this method as a triangle. We'll put the standard approved by the Board of Trustees in the left corner, the right will be item difficulty, and the top will represent the cut score for a given form. With any two of these values, we can calculate the third. So to illustrate the point from earlier, we can use the passing standard along with the item difficulty to calculate the cut score on a specific form. The passing standard is the same no matter what form you take. So just as we change the items, the cut score will have to move to compensate. As we add difficulty, the cut score drops and vice versa. Now that you understand how item difficulty affects cut score, you can probably imagine how difficult it would be for us to communicate your results in terms of correct answers. And that's where scaled score comes in. It would be difficult to communicate the raw score, the number of correct answers, for every unique version of the exam we publish, so instead we use scaled scores. This way, you always know that a 75 is the passing score. And if you are taking the exam for a second time, you can compare one form to the other without any problem. But one important note here, a 75 does not equal 75% correct. That's just the number we use as the cut point on the scale. The calculation for scaled score is easy, nothing more than basic algebra. So for this example, let's say the cut score is 135 out of 200, about 67% correct. We will set that equal to 74.5. We're accounting for rounding here rather than at the end. 99 is going to be the top of our scale, but again, we're going to account for rounding and use 99.4. So with these two values, we can start to define the translation between raw and scaled score by drawing a line through both points. We calculate the slope by applying this formula usually taught as rise over run. Once we have the slope of our line, we can then use the formula on screen to calculate the intercept by including the raw cut score and the pre-rounded scaled score. Now we have everything we need to calculate the scaled score for any number of correct answers on that particular form by simply substituting X for the number of correct answers. So let's look at this on a graph. Two forms with different items, red and gold. Red has a cut score of 135, just like our calculations, but gold has a cut score 10 higher at 145. If we find the correct number of items on the bottom axis, we can follow the lines up and see they align at the scaled score of 75. Now, I had to calculate a scaled score for two forms that were 10 raw points apart to make the arrows fit on screen. But that's really an exaggeration. ARRT psychometricians work hard to keep the raw cut score to within just a few points so that the subjective experience is similar from administration to administration. With scoring calculations under our belt, we can now move on to the final topic, reporting. Let's take a look at a sample score report. Here, you'll find the content areas that were part of your exam, the number of items for each of those content areas, and a section scaled score, pin in that for a moment. Below those three, we have the total scaled score at the bottom of the page. This is the one that determines the pass or fail status. Conveniently, we also mentioned whether the exam was a pass or a fail. And then finally, we have, if this was a failing report, a reapply or ineligible status. This tells you whether you are able to reapply or whether you have exhausted your three-year by three attempt limit. So as you can see, the score report contains a wealth of information. Section scaled scores are similar to the total at the bottom of the page, but they're calculated as though your performance on that section represented the whole exam. So while a 75 and a 7.5 have similar meaning, we include the decimal as a visual reminder that these scores are only based on a few items from a single content area. They are not as reliable as the overall exam score. So you have your exam score report. Now what? Each candidate is unique. So 
ARRT can't provide specific recommendations to improve before the next attempt. We will always encourage candidates to review and study all of the content areas before their next attempt. But the scoreboard does offer some data to help prioritize. First, use the section scale scores to identify weaknesses. A lower score means more points are up for grabs, assuming that you have the same number of items. Similarly, consider the number of items per section, because more items means more wrong answers that you can flip next time around. Again, assuming the same performance. Finally, think about which sections are most likely to improve. Not only do we have an interaction between score and item count, but candidates also have unique strengths and weaknesses. They will need to put more effort into some categories than others in order to see the same benefit. If you have further questions or want to review the score report values again, consult the interpretation guide that came with the score report. It covers much of the same material and should help plan for future attempts. If you want to know more about our exams, please look for the exam statistics report on the ARRT website. Either select the option for exam statistics in the discipline documents or pause the video and scan the QR code on screen. The exam report contains a wealth of information about exam volume and average scores for every discipline. The technical appendix covers the scaled score calculation in detail with another example, as well as the exam time limits, reliability, and more. Program directors can view their program's average scores for each calendar year, as well as the national average through EdWeb. Remember, program sizes are small and students will differ from cohort to cohort. Don't freak out over a single year's worth of data. Scores can vary widely. See the example here on screen. Everything from an 8.6 to a 9.2 just in four years. Instead, look for trends. For example, is there a section where your program is consistently high or low compared to the national average? Thank you for your time. We hope this video gives you the information you need to understand how ARRT sets the passing standard for certification exams and how those standards are used to set the cut score for individual exam forms. Good luck on your future exam attempts, and please come back to this video anytime you want to review how to interpret your score report. A big thank you to Zachary for sharing his knowledge with us. And of course, we thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave your comments below suggesting topics for future episodes. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when new content is available. Thanks for watching and see you next time.